And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Black hair, go! Hello, and welcome to another episode of Just Ask Joey. I'm your host, Joey. This is the only place on the internet where a former idiot answers your questions to help you either avoid idiocy or get over your idiocy. And speaking of idiots, Johnny Manziel. Today is July 1st, or as Manziel is calling it, Sobriety Day. So something came up this week that you guys have been asking about. Um, His dad made a comment in the papers uh, saying that he hopes he hopes that Johnny goes to jail and thinks that that would be the best thing for him. So the question of the day is, is Johnny Manziel better off in jail? The short answer, no. Jail is not what it seems. Sobriety is not what it seems or substance abuse is not what it seems one major thing when it comes down to alcohol and drug issues is it's not the alcohol or the drugs those aren't the problems those are the solutions you need to deal with what the actual issues are which is in a nutshell kind of why the whole jail thing doesn't work just because you separate yourself just because he can't be flying to vegas and dressing in mustaches and long hair and stuff and flying to Cabo and and tweeting his dad just because he can't go to Vegas and Mexico and LA or wherever else he's partying doesn't mean that it's getting solved. Separating yourself from whatever it is that you are abusing doesn't stop the fact that you are an abuser. Doesn't stop the fact that you have a problem. The drugs and the alcohol or the women or whatever it is that you're doing that's bad that's just how it's coming out. So to separate yourself from those things, to like as Johnny's dad's thinking, to go, you know, go into jail thinking, okay, well, if he separates himself from all that stuff, that'll he'll clear out and he'll clean it up. That's not the case at all. What'll happen is whatever his issues are will just manifest themselves differently once he's in jail. There are a whole bunch of people on all kinds of meds in jail. So if he wants pills, he can get pills. If he wants to drink, he can they can make up batches of pruno which are just fermented fruit juices and jellies and sugars and stuff. And you sit in a bag and it ferments until it creates an alcohol. Tastes like ass. I heard. I don't know. Never tried it. But guys get drunk off of it. That's what he would do. Whatever his vices are, the real issue is whatever the vices that are available, that's what he's doing. So you take away these vices over here and he's got more vices over here. It's not like, oh, he only drinks you know, beer. Well, if there's not beer, there's vodka. And if there's not vodka, there's tequila. If there's not tequila, there's rum. If there's not Coke, there's crank. If there's not crank, there's Adderall. Whatever, so whatever it is, whatever it is that he can get his hands on, it's what I call in my book, my book, Prison Diarrhea. It's what I call like a catfish, not the, not the internet catfish, not the MTV catfish, but like catfish are like bottom feeders and just scroungers and take whatever they can get. That's what Manzel is. That's what an addict is. An addict is somebody that will just kind of take whatever they can get. So even if it's not the thing that they've been abusing per se, they'll just find the next thing to to abuse, whatever that thing is. And when he'll come out and without having dealt with those issues, I mean, and keep in mind too, he was in rehab for a long time, right? an extended period of time, obviously not long enough. But the fact that he came out and came went right back to having those issues, issues with the girlfriend, hanging out and partying, the pictures of him at Coachella where he's like obviously lost weight and he's partying too hard and just, I mean, all that stuff, he obviously did not deal with it. So him going to jail wouldn't do anything at all. He doesn't think he has an issue. He doesn't think he has an issue so much that he said, oh, here's my, here's my done partying date. I would put $10,000 on the line that today, Johnny Manziel's sobriety day, will completely fail. Maybe not today, maybe not in two weeks, maybe not in three weeks, but he is going to absolutely fall off the wagon and be right back where he was. How do I know this? Because if he was serious, he wouldn't have put it off five days. When you're really serious about something, and this goes for anything in life, when you're really serious, start it now. The only reason that you wouldn't start it today and you go, oh, well, I'll do it in five days is because you don't really want to do it. He doesn't really want to be sober. He wants to keep playing. He knows it's wrong, 
but uh, but maybe I'll just put it off a little bit. So the fact that he's putting that off for five days or four days or whatever it was, he's screwed. There's no way. Do I think he could fix it down the line? Absolutely. But he has to be in a position where he's like, F this. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of myself. I'm tired of what I'm doing. I just got to cut it off right now. Everybody I know that's gotten sober, that's cleaned it up, had a definitive moment where they drew a line in the sand. There's no more romanticism about it. There's no more taking it lightly. It's, I'm done. I'm done doing drugs. I'm done drinking. I'm done being a womanizer. I'm done. Like, whatever it is, I'm, I'm done. Jail doesn't fix that, which is why the recidivism rate is so freaking high for, for jails. People think you go to jail and you get rehabilitated and you come out and everything's all better because you got rehabilitated. You know what you do in jail? You know what you do in prison? You sit there and you pick your ass and you hang out with a bunch of dickheads that are sitting there picking their asses, not fixing what the problem is. So then when they get out, sure, they spent a year or two or five or 10 away, but if nothing gets fixed within themselves, them spending that time apart doesn't do anything. They just come out and fall right back into the same thing. And it's very easy when you're inside to go, oh, well, I'm going to change this and change that. And then when you get put out in the real world and you get confronted with the, with those things, whatever your demons are, whatever your weaknesses are, when you get confronted with those things, that's when you see your real reaction. It's easy to say, oh, I didn't do any heroin for five years. Well, you were in jail for five years. Heroin wasn't available. But what you did do is you drank a bunch of Pruno and took a bunch of Adderall and you know, took people's Vicodin and were high all the time and were an idiot. So then when you come out, yeah, maybe you weren't doing this, but you were doing what you could get your hands on. Jail doesn't fix that. They have kind of half-assed therapy sessions. They have a completely unrealistic lifestyle, life that you're living when you're in there. So when you get out, nothing you've done for your time in there is going to translate to anything outside, especially for somebody like Johnny Manziel, somebody with some like serious money. He'll just come out and go right back to what he was doing. Plus his term would be what, three months, two months or whatever. He'd go away, come back out, and be doing the same thing over again. Manziel's dad is absolutely wrong. Jail wouldn't do anything because what Manziel's problem is is a lot deeper than just separating yourself from whatever you are abusing. Manziel's got two major problems. One, he's not taking it seriously. And two, he's hanging out, hanging out with a bunch of jerk-offs that are not his real friends. So he's surrounding himself with people that are allowing him to continue this downward spiral of his, and they don't care. The, anybody hanging out with Manziel these last year, six months, whatever, since I think the, probably the craziest thing he did was the whole flying out to Vegas and trying to play blackjack in disguise or whatever. Anybody that's hanging out from him from that point on, you're not his friend, and you're doing an absolute disservice. And the thing that's sad is he doesn't even see it. What he's doing is he's surrounding himself with people that say what you're doing is okay. And what he's doing is not, it's not okay. There were so many people that were so excited about what he was going to bring to the league. You know, not everybody's a big 6'4", 280 pound freaking defensive end guy, 6'5", you know, Calvin Johnson types, these Marshawn Lynch types, these extraordinary athletes. Manziel is a little guy that could do really big things in college. And I think that that appealed to a whole bunch of, of, of kids. And then he goes and does this, and it's so disappointing to see, you know, you just want to go, man, you got so much potential. How could you do this to yourself? And this is something that we all do to ourselves. We all have so much potential in us. Where are we minimizing our potential? We may not be drinking, we may not be doing drugs and going out partying, but what are we doing that's Manziel-like? What are we doing that's keeping us from reaching our potential? I would guarantee, and it may be not the people listening to this, because if you're listening to this, you're, you're self-aware and you want to be self-aware. So I may not be talking to you, but look around at your friends and family. Where are they selling themselves short? Are they not working hard enough? Are they not healthy enough? Are they not using stuff that they're good at? Are they not focusing on their strengths? Are they struggling and not trying to fix it? They're using the excuse, well, it's just life, it's just work. Where are you or where are your friends and family being Johnny Manziel's where you're just throwing away this promising future? Is Johnny Manziel going to be the next Tom Brady? Absolutely not. But he could have been a starting quarterback for 
10 years in the NFL. He could have done all kinds of good stuff. He could have been an inspiration to, you know, the little guys out there, the the dudes that are never going to be um, Von Miller, the dudes that are never going to be Jerry Rice. He could have been kind of the the dude for the for the little guys. Because even Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson's, you know, he's shorter for an average quarterback, but he's a pretty big dude. So, and he's, you know, he's with Ciara, so... The relatability stuff is pretty low. Menzel, you know, kind of a goofy looking kid, little, under 190 pounds. People can relate to him. And now they're just watching this dude that had all this potential, all this promise just a couple years ago, just throw it down the, down the toilet and he doesn't even care. He doesn't care so much. He's putting it off until, well, today, which was four days later. So take Menzel and him going to jail is not going to do anything. You separating yourself from whatever it is you're doing is not going to do anything without the self-reflection to see what the issue is. Where, where does the problem really lie? Why are you willing to do things that are, that are hurting yourself and your family and your friends? What is the root of the problem? Because the drugs, the alcohol, the women, whatever is not the issue. Find out what the issue is. That's why jail wouldn't do anything because it would just separate him from the stuff. He'd find new stuff, come back out and get into the old stuff. So look at yourself. Don't be a Manziel. Don't throw away all your potential. If you guys have any friends or family or yourself and you're dealing with vices, whatever the vices are, and you want to get into some deeper discussion, um, Snapchat has been, been a really great way for me to interact with you guys um, easily. If you want it to be more public, maybe your, maybe your issues you think could help other people, you can do the comment section. Do the comment sections here on, on YouTube. Um, you can leave comments for iTunes, and if you're if you're listening to this and you're enjoying these these uh, last few weeks of, of episodes and stuff, we're we're just con- we're continuing to do this. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel or subscribe to iTunes. Leave comments, share stuff that you think will help people in your in your community and people around you. Um, I love being able to interact with you guys and help you guys out. That's a huge thing for me. Because there were times where it was so dark and so bad for me. And knowing that it was completely my fault made it a thousand times worse. Because I could have totally avoided the issues I was in. And that's kind of what this whole podcast is about. Is helping you avoid issues. Granted, we get some fun stuff. You know, talking about, you know, Kevin Durant. You know, the Johnny Manziel thing is a little fun, but there's a lot of really serious points to be made here. This is designed to help you avoid putting yourself in pretty dark and grim situations or helping you get out of pretty dark or grim situations because there's nothing that you're in that needs to keep you there. You are the deciding factor of whether or not you stay in the dark or not, whether or not you lay down in that hole you dug or not. It's completely up to you. And you you need to make that decision to get yourself out of that hole and don't do the Johnny Manziel stupid ass thing where you say, well, I'll do it in four days. I'll do it in three days. If you know what you're doing is not good for you and you know the direction you need to go to get out of that, get your ass out of it now, please. Any other, if you, is anything that I, did you would like to get into deeper discussions? If there's like an off question of this, we can almost do like a part two for it. If there's a, um, an aspect of this that you want, that you want me to expand on, let me know. I can throw up a, a, like an extension podcast of, of stuff that comes up in this. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. We have a huge game. I'm obviously, I don't know if you guys notice, I'm wearing my Italy jersey for you guys that are watching me on youtube for you guys on soundcloud and itunes that the visual is not going to do you any good listening to it but um huge game against germany so all you soccer fans out there um hope you guys have a good weekend and i will see you on monday and she was like who and he was like nah and we was like what